Hello, my name is Erin Pirro and I'm the Farm Business Consultant at Farm Credit East. And I'd like to share with you today one of the most important strategic decisions you can make for your business, and that is having an adequate source of liquidity. Now, I'd like to call your attention to the top third of the balance sheet for this discussion. You see, liquidity is one of the most underemphasized tools of running a business. And not having enough money is one of the biggest sources of agita for business owners. And when you're just starting out, it's even more so. It's tempting to put everything you have into the business to give it the best possible chance of succeeding, but that also leaves little room for adversity. My friend Rick likes to talk about working capital like a scuba diver talks about air in their scuba tank. Many of us working in very seasonal businesses in agriculture often have to pay for the inputs well before we receive the product of the outputs. That means we need to have a significant source of funding in order to be able to get through from planting season to harvest season and sell all of the crop. It's much like the scuba diver needing air to breathe while they're underwater and enough air to make it through to the other side of the dive. So where will that money or air for our business come from? Business owners can get very creative to figure this out. Often we reach for the fast ways of getting money first, such as using trade credit where a vendor extends terms for you to pay later, or putting those expenses on your credit card, or having a line of credit with a bank. These all take advantage of liability arrangements, and when you harvest the crop, the expectation is that you pay off the debt. The downside is it's not without risk. If there's a hiccup in production, yield, price, even timing of the crop sale, you may not have as much money left over as you think paying off these loans. You're also depending on the creditor to have funding available, and that's not always the case. Luckily, there's another way, which is using the asset side of your balance sheet. If you choose this path, you'll use your savings or investments to pay for the crop inputs. Then, once you sell your products, you replenish your savings account because you've already paid for the crop expenses. Sounds great, you say, except I don't have that money right now. Well, let's figure out how to earn it so that you can build a sustainable and resilient business. If you sit down at the beginning of the year and take a look at your balance sheet, it will give you signals about the year to come. This is a pretty cool trick, and I wish more business owners took advantage of it and you can see more in our balance sheet discussion. If we've properly categorized our current asset, the things that we own that are cash or will be turned into cash in the normal operating cycle of our next business year, and our current liabilities, those that will need to be paid over the course of the next operating cycle, our numbers will predict what's about to happen. It can also tell us how much of a cushion we have in our business, and goodness knows we need that. It's those times when you need everything to work perfectly that just about guarantees it won't. Building in that cushion can mean the difference between being able to farm again for another year or having to sell an important asset. So here's a few ways to tease that story out of your records. First is the current ratio. If we compare our current assets and current liabilities by dividing the two, we get a ratio. $47,000 of current assets divided by $41,000 of current liabilities is a current ratio of 1.15 to 1. That means we've likely got everything covered, but without much cushion. Working capital is a different way to look at liquidity because it measures the magnitude of the cushion. Here, we'll take $47,000 of current assets and subtract $41,000 of current liabilities which gives us a cushion or working capital of $6,000. Is that adequate for your business? A good way to tell is by looking at how many months of expenses that will cover. Ideally, it will cover about 25% of your annual expenses. And this is pretty similar to the personal financial planning conversations, where the goal is to have at least three months, preferably six months worth of expenses saved for emergency situations. And coincidentally, three months is 25% of the year. Finally, let's look at the quick ratio. It's like the current ratio, but it takes inventory out of the equation. So it only looks at things like cash and prepaid expenses and compares that to current liabilities. 
Because inventory isn't included in the quick ratio, the number is always lower than the current ratio number. But if your quick ratio goes below 1.0 to 1, that means you're going to be relying on selling some of your inventory to pay regular bills, which may be a concern if sales don't meet expectations. You'll often hear that restructuring debt is a way to build working capital, and it makes sense that if your payments are lower, that you'll have more money on hand. Be careful with this, though, because it cuts both ways. Remember that businesses should be able to pay off the investment over its original useful life. And while taking a loan out for a longer term reduces the payments a bit, all too often those savings aren't savings, they're money that gets spent elsewhere. Now, let's talk about a few more productive ways to build your working capital. You could commit to saving some percentage of your sales so that you build a habit of paying yourself first. Even 1% is better than nothing, so give that one a thought. You could work on collecting your outstanding invoices sooner rather than playing bank to your customers. You could fine tune how much product you really need to grow. Because while growing more can lead to production efficiency, growing more than you need or more than you're going to sell takes money straight out of your pocket. You see, for the number that you don't sell, that effectively doubles the cost of production on the same number of units that do sell. You could put off a major capital purchase for a year and instead rent that piece of equipment only when you need it. Here's where it's crucial to examine the total implications about a purchase. You see, many business owners will say it's silly to rent a piece of equipment for $600 a month when you could own it for $300 per month. If you were to use that piece of equipment all year long, that could be a very good strategy. Very likely though, you'll be using it for just a few weeks of the year. And if you were to buy it, there's insurance and repairs and property taxes you'll be committing to, just to name a few expenses. And we don't really think about those in the grand scheme of a total capital purchase. That's where the whole picture is so important because preventing these leaks, financial leaks out of your business can really help you stockpile some working capital and give yourself a cushion, give yourself more breathing room, and most importantly, more air in your tank. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've learned some good tips on liquidity management and building that cushion that you can put to work in your own business. And let's take those next and go to our final video in the series, which is about building a plan for the year in numbers.